So recently, Ubisoft flew me out to a very special event where I got to play Star Wars Outlaws. I spent about four hours playing the game, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you my honest impressions of the game, and I'm going to talk about the various single-player missions I played, as well as what it was like to explore the open world, partake in space battles, and so much more. I'll also talk about one area of the game that definitely needs major improvement. As it stands right now, the game is not perfect. I'm going to talk about the good and the bad in this video. But before we begin, I want to give a huge thanks and shout out to Ubisoft and Massive for flying me out to the event and giving me the opportunity to play Star Wars Outlaws. All right, so let's dive into the video, shall we? So as I already mentioned, I got to play about four hours of Star Wars Outlaws and the first mission I experienced took place right after I crash landed on the moon of Tashara. And after a quick battle with the locals there, which showed off Kay's ability to target multiple enemies at once, I hopped onto my speeder and headed into town. A mechanic informed me to meet up with Gorak, the Pike Syndicate leader, in order to find work to repair my ship, so that was my main goal. And I'm not going to lie, I was really impressed with how vast Tashara looked, and I ran into some bandits as well who were also riding speeders and trying to chase me down, but I managed to survive and make it to the city. Now, once in Miragana Valley, I made my way towards the cantina and took in the sights and sounds of this area. It was really uh, quite amazing. Not only were there plenty of people roaming around, but stormtroopers were on guard and very hesitant to let me in at first. So it really felt like there was some tension there and it really felt like a real living environment. Thankfully, I finally made my way to the cantina and tried to convince the bartender to talk to Gorak, but that did not work out, so I had to sneak my way into Gorak's lair through vents. And even though I managed my way into Gorak's lair, he immediately saw through me and tossed me out, which I found quite interesting. It's obvious that Kay is quite an amateur at the beginning of this game. She feels out of place when dealing with the syndicates, and it's clear that she's got to learn what to say and how to say it in order to be convincing with the syndicate leaders. And this is where Donka came in, who took me under her wing and supplied me with various jobs. Now, Donka then hires me to steal top secret information from Gorak's private base. So naturally, in the desperate situation I'm in, I accept the job. Now, this led me onto a stealth mission where I infiltrated Gorak's main base. And on this particular mission, if K is caught by the guards, the mission would abruptly end and reload the last checkpoint. So getting caught was not an option here. So I used my little buddy Nyx to knock out enemies and continued my way through the base trying not to get caught. And along the way, there were some really cool climbing sections that were reminiscent of the Uncharted series, as well as areas that required me to hack doors with her handy tool. And there were even many puzzles as well. And thankfully, these puzzles were easy enough to solve without becoming a burden or overly frustrating. I absolutely hate it when games have these overly frustrating puzzles in there. And so far, from what I've seen, Star Wars Outlaws does not have this problem. Now, Nyx also helped me out by opening shutters, which allowed me to shoot the fan controls so I could get through the tunnels successfully, and I used Kay's grapple hook to get across gaps as well. So she has some handy tools to help her get around, and there's a lot of traversal and a lot of parkouring, if you will, in this game, which I do like. And here, this is when the area opened up into a wide open space where the pikes were located. I had to disable the energy barriers in order to gain access to the room containing the sensitive information that Kay was after. There were also some grassy sections too that allowed me to take cover and perform stealth takedowns on some enemies with the help of Nyx, of course. But then all heck broke loose and I had to open fire on the remaining pikes utilizing Kay's handy pistol as well as a secondary weapon like this A300 blaster, which I randomly found and picked up off the ground. But unfortunately, it could only be used until it's 
energy depleted. So there's no like reloading with this weapon. It's a one and done type weapon. Now, once I took down all of the enemies, I disabled the remaining energy barrier and hacked the elevator, which brought me to the room containing the sensitive data I was after. And this is where I had to hack a computer and then hidden within was a top secret recording revealing a traitor within Gorak's ranks. Now, escaping the base with this sensitive information involved some more climbing and parkour, and I had to fight off some enemies as well before I finally completed the mission. But technically, the mission wasn't over just yet. And this is where things got really interesting, to be honest. I brought the top secret info back to Donka, who introduced me to a character by the name of Alira from Crimson Dawn. Now, Alira quickly threatened to turn me in because she knew I had stolen the Trailblazer ship and that another syndicate, Zarek Besh, was looking for me. So I had the option of either giving the top sensitive info to Crimson Dawn or handing it over to Gorak to get in good standings with the Pikes. So in the end, I chose to side with Crimson Dawn because I didn't want to get on their bad side. Plus, I didn't want Zarek Besh, you know, trying to find me. And as a reward for this, I was given fuel injectors to repair my ship and my reputation with Crimson Dawn increased from poor to good. So this beginning mission really showcased what the game is all about, an emphasis on stealth gameplay where Kay's main goal is to not get caught, but she will fight if she absolutely has to. And to be honest with you, I love it when all heck breaks loose in the game, and I love it when I can fully utilize her blaster pistol and those secondary pickup weapons. And yes, her primary pistol can be upgraded with new modules. I actually added the ion module to it, which allowed me to easily disable enemy shields, shock enemies, and then open certain areas like certain doors and stuff like that. And there's even more upgrades, but unfortunately I did not get to experience those in my playtime. There's an upgrade that appears to give the pistol a more rapid fire and then also an explosive shot and I'm sure there's even more upgrades beyond that as well. But the end result of these main missions by the way seems to always come with a choice. You have to choose which syndicate you want to side with and it seems almost impossible to make two syndicates happy with you at the same time. So your reputation with each syndicate will always be fluctuating and I absolutely love this aspect of the game. So once I had my fuel injectors for my ship, I then repaired the ship and it was ready to head out into space. But I first decided to do some free roaming on to Shara to see what this open world gameplay was really like. I really wanted to get on that speeder and just explore the whole area and take on some random outposts. So in the beginning, of my free roaming adventures, it was a blast zipping around on my speeder, seeing the beautiful environment of Tashara, the trees and fields of grass, wisping in the wind, for instance. It really was an amazing sight in this game. Now, I managed to attack a few medium-sized bases with Case pistol, secure some loot, and head out to some other bases to attack as well. And each base felt quite unique from one another, at least in this beginning phase of the game. So I was quite happy with the various types of areas. But soon, I recognized the game's biggest flaw, how it handles secondary weapons. After I attacked a base and cleared it of enemies, I secured a new secondary weapon like this rocket launcher. So naturally, you know, I was very excited to use the launcher on the next base, but when I got on my speeder, K simply dropped the rocket launcher and left it behind. I was baffled at why she would drop a perfectly good weapon like the rocket launcher. And I also discovered she does this with every secondary weapon, regardless of if it is a rocket launcher, sniper rifle, or blaster rifle. She will drop these secondary weapons when getting on her speeder, when climbing ladders, hacking terminals, or even when jumping down from ledges. I gave feedback on this part of the game, and I'm hoping that the developers listen and patch this as a day one patch to fix this issue. It seems absolutely crazy to me 
that K would drop a perfectly good weapon for no reason. I understand that her pistol is supposed to be her primary weapon, but at least allow players to pick up and carry secondary weapons and take them anywhere within the open world sections, especially since this game has been marketed as an open world game with absolute freedom. So again, this whole thing of her throwing away secondary weapons simply does not fit the narrative and the marketing of this game. Anyways, after exploring for a bit, I then launched off into space and engaged in some space battles, which was actually a lot of fun. Also, you'll notice when you launch off into space, it plays a nice cinematic that's very seamless. It feels like you're actually flying from the ground surface up into the atmosphere, clear into space. So I think this is very well done. And then, of course, when you land on a planet, it's very seamless as well. Your ship, the Trailblazer, will simply go into the planet's atmosphere and then it will go into a cinematic. And it's very well done. This is one part of the game that I'm very impressed with. And you can really tell the developers thought this through, so that way you're not sitting through some loading screen, you know, as you are making your way to the planet's surface or up into space. Now, this next mission was given to me by Crimson Dawn, and it was to infiltrate an Imperial space station and get data for Crimson Dawn. I'm not going to lie, the space station interiors are definitely some of my favorites, and this particular mission required extra sneakiness because I couldn't get caught once or it would set off the alarms and reload the last checkpoint. And yes, you can disable some of the alarms, but there's really no indication of how many alarms you need to disable before it is safe enough to start shooting enemies. I hope they implement this in the final game. Now, I won't spoil this mission because there is actually a really interesting character on the space station that you run into. And I think it's definitely worth experiencing this character for yourself for the first time. And I also played the Kajimi mission as well, but we've already seen plenty of gameplay of this exact same mission. So I'm not gonna go over, you know, this whole thing play by play, but seeing it and experiencing it for myself was definitely awesome. You know, Kajimi is definitely one of my favorite environments in the game. It's got that beautiful snowy environment, the snowy streets, the interiors are incredibly detailed. And at one point I got into some serious gunfights uh, within the interior spaces, got some verticality over the enemy. So that was a lot of fun, and I did enjoy the mission on this particular planet. One last thing, I did some free roam space exploration as well, and I was actually quite surprised at how much fun this was. I thought the space exploration would feel a little bit more tacked on and kind of like a second thought, but it did not feel that way from my initial impressions. So I was flying around a mysterious icy area with thunder and lightning. This was actually really well done. The sound design here was awesome. And I eventually ran into a large pirate cruiser as well, which resulted in a really fun space battle. So I actually really enjoyed this section of the game. So overall, I had a lot of fun with Star Wars Outlaws. The game definitely has a focus on storytelling, and I genuinely like Kay and Nyx as characters. And I found many of the other characters fascinating as well. And the only thing holding this game back for me is the way it handles the secondary weapons. If they patch and fix that issue, you know, where Kay is dropping secondary weapons for no reason, then I think I would be much happier with this game. So sound off in the comments down below. What do you think about Star Wars Outlaws based on my impression so far, based on the gameplay I've shown you? And I'll be posting more videos on Star Wars Outlaws right here at the channel, of course. But I wanted to get this video out to share my initial thoughts and impressions with you all. And let me know. Will you be getting the game when it releases on August 30th? Sound off in the comments. And thanks for watching the video. And I'll see you next time. And may the force be with you. Always.